This video summarizes the book Nervous Vitality, 1874, by the esteemed Dr. Seaborn Freeman Salter, a distinguished doctor of medicine. Modern science and the World Health Organization will not tell you the devastating impact of masturbation on people's lives as they want to profit from your ill health. Pornography, lustfulness, lewdness are considered normal and free. But medicine will cost you your labor. They give us poison for free and sell us the cure. So in this video, we unravel the profound truth of Dr. Salter's teachings on the origins, preventive measures, and the adverse effects that stem from masturbation. And here's the remarkable part. These insights are not a product of imagination, but are based on Dr. Salter's real-life experiences during his medical career. The silence and misplaced modesty that often surround this topic will not make it disappear. People are dying before their time and their dreams, hopes, innovative ideas with them because of this evil vice. It is time for humanity to awaken. So join us on this enlightening journey as we explore the importance of semen retention and the poisonous effect of masturbation guided by the illuminating pages of Nervous Vitality. Masturbation relates to the artificial indulgence of sexual desire, achieved through the manipulation of the male reproductive organs. The earliest documented instance of this behavior can be traced back to Onan in Genesis, chapter 38, verses 9 and 10, which subsequently gave rise to the term Onanism. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Notably, God punished Onan for this offense, and the consequences of this curse continue to affect individuals to this day. The vice whether referred to as onanism, masturbation, self-pollution, solitary vice, or under various other names, essentially involves similar means. Unfortunately, it plagues thousands of individuals, both male and female. Emission of sexual fluid is unattainable in either sex without artificial stimulation of the reproductive organs. A mental fixation on amorous thoughts as sometimes occurs in dreams or through the magnetism generated during sexual intercourse. This intercourse represents a form of magnetism that yields an electrical discharge. Upon the release of semen combined with animal electricity, the passions within the genitalia are quelled the male organ loses its electrical charge and the desire subsides, akin to the feathers of a quill pen, which when electrified stand erect but fall when the charge is withdrawn from the stem. This is the same electrical charge that we lose when we relapse on semen retention, which is a detriment to our masculine energy. It is crucial to recognize that God has established a method for procreation through sexual cohabitation and any other method for propagating the species should be met with ill health, unhappiness, and a shortened life. God was aware, as are those who engage in self-abuse, that the desire for marriage is significantly diminished, perhaps to the point of revulsion, as a result of this practice. This is not the case for those who remain uncorrupted by this vice. The sexes are naturally attracted to one another like magnets and their greatest joy is experienced when they come together in a state of sexual love. A woman can never be satisfied by a man who lacks the ability to electrify her through the emission of semen. Nor can a man find fulfillment through masturbation or sexual interaction with the opposite sex without achieving an electric discharge of semen. When God has instilled in men and women a yearning for one another, it should come as no surprise that, in cases where marriage is postponed, we witness rape, prostitution, clandestine liaisons among the young, and masturbation. Just as one would not command a hurricane to subdue its rage, before it has exhausted its fury or a thunderbolt to cease when the cloud is still charged with electricity, 
one should not expect the passion of sexual desire to remain silent while it is unfulfilled and constantly provoked to activity. This is why when we are practicing semen retention, it is very important to transmute this electrical energy or it would lead to severe discomfort and unnatural urge which corrupts the mind. None of the following symptoms are exaggerated. They are simply manifestations of the effects I have observed in my practice. Masturbation is a burgeoning issue. Silence and misguided modesty will never eliminate it. The effects of masturbation on both sexes are manifold, and the practice has various detrimental consequences. It depletes the body's vitality, weakens the entire system, impairs the functioning of the reproductive organs, disrupts digestion and circulation, deranges the brain and nervous system, fosters mental depravity of diverse kinds, hampers procreation in certain cases, and results in feeble and frail offspring in others. It diminishes a woman's esteem in the eyes of a man and a man's esteem in the eyes of a woman. It is a scourge, both morally and physically. The practice of masturbation is stubbornly clung to by many due to the fleeting and transient animal pleasure it provides. However, it is essential to remember that the road to pleasure is, in truth, the road to insanity, disease and death. Those who persist on this enticing path without fleeing its temptations will bear the weight of retribution. Masturbation as a cause of insanity deserves particular attention. Nearly one-seventh of all cases of insanity can be traced back to this practice, a fact that may seem astonishing but is undeniably true. The practice is often freely admitted but vigorously opposed. In males, the habit is easily detectable through physical signs. In females, however, it is not as readily apparent. A shy, downcast countenance combined with an enervated appearance, relaxed tissues and engorged veins can arouse suspicions of masturbation. In some females, this behavior results in the development of adipose tissue and a seductive demeanor, while in others, it leads to debility and emaciation. Self-indulgence debilitates both the body and the mind making individuals incapable of handling any form of excitement. Consciously aware of the sin associated with masturbation, their thoughts are redirected toward religious matters, and under the resulting emotional strain, reason eventually gives way. It is not religious fervor, but masturbation, that leads to insanity. In the same condition, any other form of excitement can also lead to mental derangement. Do not transgress against your own bodies. Foster pure and refined love. Marry the object of your affections. Love and respect each other, and health, happiness, and a ripe old age will be your reward in this life. Your children will rise and call you blessed. Spermatoria may manifest in several stages or forms, including nocturnal emissions, involuntary seminal emissions, and seminal weakness. Nocturnal emissions refer to the release of semen during dreams, which can be of an amorous or sensual nature. The culmination of the dream results in the discharge of fluid, and the individual awakens to discover the emission has occurred, leaving them weak and drained. It is worth noting that one such dream and emission takes a more considerable toll on the body than several natural emissions. In nearly every case where self-abuse has been practiced to a significant extent, the brain becomes afflicted with an abnormal passion, the sexual organs become highly excitable, and the overall physical vitality deteriorates. Consequently, lascivious dreams lead to emissions of semen. This occasionally happens to people that just started the practice of semen retention. Nocturnal emissions may also occur in individuals who have never engaged in self-abuse, but this usually happens when the mind has been preoccupied with amorous thoughts during waking hours. Initially, these emissions may occur at long intervals, such as once a month or less. However, if the habit persists, 
the frequency can increase to once a week or even more frequent occurrences. Persons who are entirely chaste and have never practiced self-abuse are also susceptible to voluptuous dreams, a phenomenon that is not limited to a particular gender. In the state of perfect health, devoid of excesses or self-abuse, these dreams serve as a safety valve and do little harm, especially for individuals who lead healthy lifestyles and do not engage in strenuous labor. To help those who experience these infrequent emissions, mental engagement, regular physical activity, an occasional salt water bath, and the avoidance of sexual thoughts are usually sufficient. It's important to clarify that these recommendations apply to those who experience such emissions at extended intervals. When such emissions become nearly nightly occurrences, they require more substantial treatment. In most cases, dreams can be controlled by avoiding any form of sexual excitement, diverting the mind from such thoughts, and focusing on something of a different nature. The key concept is that our mental state during sleep mirrors our thoughts when we are awake. Consequently, if our thoughts are pure while awake, they will seldom turn impure while sleeping. A pure mind is a semen retention practitioner's best friend. However, it is crucial to note that nocturnal emissions, as mentioned earlier, are debilitating and highly harmful unless they occur infrequently. They represent only the beginning of a more severe complication for those engaged in self-abuse and should serve as a warning of the dire consequences if the habit persists. At this stage, it is essential to seek proper treatment promptly as failure to do so can lead to involuntary seminal emissions. These emissions can occur at any time, whether awake or asleep, and their effects are more distressing than those of nocturnal emissions. A weakened nervous system can result in conditions such as consumption, insanity, or a complete loss of all sexual feeling, often with these consequences occurring in combination. Impotency or sterility can also result from the habit or the birth of weak, feeble-minded offspring. In this advanced stage, there is almost a constant dribbling of semen and the slightest stimulus, whether it's a woman's touch, the sight of her neck, a seductive glance, an amorous thought, a suggestive image, or a lewd description, can lead to an involuntary loss of semen. Goitus, or sex, is virtually impossible in this condition. The individual cannot maintain control of their emissions long enough to engage in penetrative intercourse. In the manner that semen is released from them, there is no pleasure. Nonetheless, they may still resort to masturbation in an attempt to satisfy an insatiable craving. The mind becomes increasingly enfeebled, memory is impaired, the body wastes away, the eyes wander vacantly, the inclination for conversation and social interaction disappears. Semen is frequently discharged during bowel movements or in the urine without any noticeable erection and all pleasure has long since vanished. The genital organs may become inflamed and highly sensitive, making intercourse impossible. Even the sight of a woman becomes disagreeable. The individual is reduced to a miserable state where masturbation may still occur during sleep, unless their hands are restrained to prevent such actions. At this stage, the mind becomes entirely preoccupied with the idea of its wretched and loathsome condition, haunted by the distressing thought that everyone is aware of their state and despises and loathes them. Tormented by countless demons from whom there is no escape, they may contemplate suicide, plagued by physical pains and mental anguish. Their sight deteriorates, their mind becomes clouded, ringing sounds fill their head, their constitution deteriorates, and they may ultimately find themselves in a consumptive's grave or confined within the walls of a mental institution. The confessions of wretched victims of masturbation and involuntary seminal emissions reveal all of these horrors and more. If I were to publish these testimonies as they were conveyed to me, word for word, even in their final moments, you would be astonished by the profound devastation that this demon wreaks. 
not only among men, but also among women. Both sexes, or individuals from both sexes, are guilty of this unforgivable sin that leads to death through involuntary seminal emissions. During a visit to a mental institution on one occasion, I observed the effects in certain cases that were known to have been admitted due to this cause. I encountered one emaciated individual, a mere skeleton, from whom semen constantly dribbled. His hands were bound to prevent contact, yet, with the remnants of his strength, he persisted in seeking even the slightest source of friction. Another case involved an individual who had received an education and earned a medical degree, but had been a victim of this affliction since childhood, resisting all efforts to curb the habit. It is paramount to prevent these scenarios from becoming a reality. However, why elaborate on this list of horrors, which is so nightmarish and yet entirely real? Reader, if you are a victim of this demon, pause before it is too late. Seek the means to eradicate its effects from your system and practice semen retention and strive to live as someone pursuing health and happiness in this life and the promise of immortality in the next. Tuberculosis is the result of masturbation and sexual excesses in thousands of cases being essentially a disease engendered by a low state of nervous vitality by which the blood is impoverished and divested of the red principle. Tubercles are deposited in the lungs because of this depression and want of power to take up and supply nutriment to the blood and nervous system. Tubercles are never formed where the blood and nervous system are in a healthy condition. This cannot be the case where masturbators keep up a continual drain upon this vital principle. Consumptive masturbators soon occupy their last heritage on earth, the grave, and are often mourned as the victims of cold, overwork and so on when they are in fact self-murderers. Cancer is often the result of masturbation, there can be no doubt. I have in an extensive practice and treatment of this disease met with several well-authenticated cases produced from this practice. These were cases of cancer on the penis, produced by friction of the parts, keeping up a constant irritation. And at same time, the blood, impoverished by the drain upon the system, was more subject to those infiltrations or cell growths. This is also affected through the nervous systems. I can confidently assert that in approximately 90% of epilepsy cases, their origin can be traced back to masturbation. I have dedicated myself to the specialized treatment of this affliction and have consistently achieved success when patients abstain from the habit. However, there have been two cases where individuals now reside in a mental institution solely due to their inability to break free from this practice. Despite administering the most potent remedies to curb their sexual desires and warning them of the impending peril, it was, unfortunately, too late, and they now face a wretched demise. Neplepsy, as universally acknowledged, manifests as spasm stemming from an underlying morbid disruption within the nerve centers, encompassing both the brain and the spinal column. In masturbators, a particular lesion occurs, involving the membrane enclosing the spinal cord, typically situated just below the juncture of the brain and spinal cord. Epilepsy ensues as a result of this lesion. The sole effective means of treatment involves eliminating the provoking factor and applying remedies that target the affected segment of the nervous system. However, it's important to note that therapeutic interventions are futile unless the root cause, which is masturbation in this context, is abandoned. Should this be rectified in a timely manner, epilepsy can invariably be cured. Palpitation of the heart, sinking sensation, fainting, frequently result from masturbation. The principles are the same. By weakening the nerve or controlling force, you leave the system without defense against sudden shocks, and hence we have heart derangements. Dyspepsia or indigestion is a very common effect of masturbation. 
and sexual excesses acting upon the same principle, the nerve force is lowered, the power cut off from the parvagum, and we are obliged to have an impaired condition of the functions of digestion. It requires no elaborate argument to convince the reader of this. Shortness of breath is also the result of this practice. The nerves controlling the mechanical part of respiration being too weak to perform their functions, we have hurried breathing. Constipation is also a result of masturbation and in turn often becomes an exciting cause of involuntary emissions. The hardened and impacted feces get up a species of irritation and being reflected to the genital organs, emissions take place. The condition of the bowels is highly important in treating seminal weakness. This is why it is recommended to have regular bowel movements while practicing semen retention. Frequently we meet with an irritable condition of the kidney and bladder, prostate gland and urethra, all from the effects of the miserable habit. They are the direct result of local irritation and can only be overcome by the removal of the cause. In summary, Persistent masturbation can result in severe consequences such as consumption, cancer, epilepsy, and various other health issues. I provide this information in the interest of humanity, despite potential criticism from those with conservative views. It's important to understand the symptoms and signs of those engaged in this practice and to educate our youth about its dangers and enlighten them with the importance of practicing semen retention.